What's up everybody, my name is Josh Migliori and welcome back to another episode of Running the Pass Cooking Channel. This week folks, I put it out there for a vote and you brought it hard. That's right, we're talking about short ribs and not just any kind of short rib. We're gonna be showing you how to braise them with some of this beautiful red wine. And I'm not just gonna be slapping that shit on a plate with some meat and potatoes like when we were kids. We're standing up for what's right and I'm gonna be bringing it to you like Spice Girls, spicing up your life with That's right, folks. Short rib poutine. Poutine, folks. It's delicious, and I'm going to be walking you through step by step how to prepare the fries, the gravy, and plating this beautiful meat, beautiful meat on top. Let's stop wasting time standing here in front of this beautiful display, and let's show you how to do it. Step one is mirepoix and prepping the short ribs. All right, folks, so we're starting out here with two to three pounds of bone-in short ribs, one yellow onion, three celery hearts. Then we have two carrot sticks that have been peeled and somehow been replaced with drumsticks. Then one full garlic clove. Amazing, right? Three bay leaves and a bunch of thyme. Lastly, any dry red wine would do, but I use Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay, so first off, we're gonna be doing a rough chop on our onion, chopping off both ends, and then chopping it in half, and then chopping it in half again. For all my homies out there who can't count, that's called quarters. Then once you're done cutting those bad larries, you're gonna to wanna to peel off its flesh. Don't worry, it doesn't feel a thing, but just to be sure, dispose of all evidence. Once you're done chopping and peeling, make sure to find the smallest bowl and add them to it. Next, we're gonna be chopping the celery and the carrots. Now, for this, size doesn't matter, but if you wanna be perfect like me, you're gonna chop those pieces into at least three inches in size consistently. And you guessed it, take that small bowl that you put your onions in and just keep stacking that son of a bitch. Give it some CPR to make sure that it's still alive and look at that, I did it, ta-da. Lastly, chop the top off the garlic clove. All right, so for prepping the short ribs, you're gonna wanna use salt, pepper, those luscious meat mountains, and a bowl full of flour. Now, take your short ribs and lightly dredge them in flour. And lightly smack the flour off. Or give it a good smack to show it who's boss. In all seriousness though, the goal here is to get all sides lightly coated in flour. The reason for this is it will help with the browning process when you go to add them to your pan. And if you thought I could get any more childish, make sure you get in there and rub it in good. But seriously though, make sure that they're lightly coated. Next, add some oil to the top of your short ribs. And you guessed it, rub it in good. The reason for this is if you just left it with the flour, the seasoning would not stick. Then you'll take your salt and pepper and heavily season your short ribs. Make sure that they are coated on all sides. And when you're done, they should look like this. Now look at that thicky. Step two is searing the short ribs. With your heat on high, take some oil and add it to your pot. You're going to want to add just enough oil to get a good sear, around one quarter of a cup. Once your pan is rip roaring and soaring, in two batches, add two of those thick boys to your pot. Now, I know my camera wouldn't focus properly for this next part, but as you can see, you're going to want to get a nice hard sear on these short ribs. That's right, I said it. Hard sear. Then you'll spin them 90 degrees until all sides look like this. I mean... Come on, golden brown and delicious folks. Now, the reason for this is when we put this into its braising liquid and we stick it in the oven to roast it or braise it, the juices will not leak out. And that right there is what they should look like when they are ready to come out. And again, like I said, do this in batches. My pan is not the biggest, but it does its job. If you have a bigger pan, you can probably add a little more, 
but I would recommend two to three every batch. And once these thickies are done searing, transfer them to a sheet pan and let them rest before they take a bath. Step three is, you guessed it, braising time. Remove three quarters of the oil that was left in your pot and then take your garlic clove head side down and place it into the oil. Then take that rabbit food and place it into your pot. Once that garlic clove looks roasty and toasty, remove it from the pot. Then add your onions and celery and stir it around. We're not looking to get these caramelized in any way, just cook down enough before we add the liquid. Optionally, if you're feeling spicy like me, you can add some crushed red pepper flakes and incorporate that into your mirepoix. Now this process is gonna take about 10 to 15 minutes or until your vegetables start to look like they're breaking down. Now with a heavy hand, you're gonna to wanna to add two to three cups of that red wine. Now with your beef stock, add about three to three and a half cups into your pot. Add your three bay leaves and your thyme. Toss in that whole garlic clove. Now it's time to nestle those thickies in its bath. Shout out to the small pot club. Add your lid and place this bad Larry into an oven that was preheated at 350 degrees and let them cook for two to two and a half hours. Once they're done, remove them from the oven and they should look as beautiful as this. Remove them from the pot and place them on a cutting board until ready to serve. Step four is making french fries. Okay, so we're starting out with two large russet potatoes that have been washed. Then take your peeler and peel the skins off the potatoes. Now, if you want to, you can leave the skins on if you want to feel artisanal. Now, every potato can't be perfect. Don't fret. Just keep peeling that bad Larry until it's been removed. Once you're done peeling your potatoes, they should look like this. As for the skins, compost them, throw them away. I don't care, we're not using them. We're cutting our potatoes like this, batons. Perfect, I know. Cut your potato in half, and again, just like before, using math, cut them in half again, or quarters. Then you're gonna want to slice your quarters into strips, just like that. Perfect knife cuts. Then you're gonna to wanna to cut your sections into batons evenly. I don't wanna see any weird looking potatoes. It's not that they won't taste good, but listen, we're all perfectionists. Keep it that way, please. Now we're gonna be washing our potatoes three times. The first round should look like this. Very cloudy water, no good. Repeat this process two more times. The goal here is to remove as much starch from the potato as possible. When you're done, your water and potatoes should look like this. Clear water and clean fries. Now we're ready to fry. Make sure to place your potatoes on a towel and get them completely dry before frying. Dude, for real? Again? It's not ready. Just wait. Okay, so for the first round of frying, your oil should be set at 325 degrees. Add your fries in batches. After about five to seven minutes, your fries for the first round should look like this. Perfectly cooked on the inside, but not golden brown. Not yet. Repeat this process until all of your batches of potatoes have been fried. For the second round of frying, crank your oil heat up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and again, add your fries in batches. Nobody wants oil overflowing onto your stove. It just ruins the mood and it's gonna ruin this recipe too. Once your fries are golden brown and delicious, remove them from the oil and place them on a wire rack that has a sheet tray underneath and then season them properly with salt and if you wanna feel fancy, add some cracked black pepper. Repeat this process until all your fries are done. Step five is gravy. Okay, so for this short rib gravy, you're gonna to wanna to scoop out at least two to two and a half cups of the braising liquid. Please include the vegetables, it just adds an extra depth of flavor. Next, blend your braising liquid mixture until everything is well incorporated. Then pour your gravy through a fine mesh strainer. That way we end up with a smooth gravy and we get rid of all those little tiny imperfections. Lastly, you're gonna wanna cook your gravy over medium high heat until it starts to thicken. And there you have it folks, short rib gravy. Now let's get to making this poutine. Step six is plating. 
Whoops, where'd that beer come from? Screw that cheese pull nonsense and look at that bone pull. That's when you know that these short ribs are cooked perfectly. These bones should slide right out. And thanks to that searing, these things are juicy. Slice your short rib into about one inch squares. They should look just like this and have some firmness, but just barely hold together. Take your short rib slices and then slice them down into smaller cubes. And now it's time to plate. First, you're gonna to wanna to lay down a big bed of those fried tater sticks. Then take a nice big handful of those cheese squeakers and place them on top of your fries. Then take that wonderful short rib gravy and dump it on top. And I mean, be generous, seriously. Then top it with your short ribs. Now you can use a fork or your fingers, but we all know I gotta be fancy, so I'm busting out them big ass tweezers. Optionally, you can top it with some sliced green onions. You don't have to, but in all honesty, you probably should. To add a little freshness to this dish, because it's fucking heavy, I topped it with a little bit of a celery leaf salad. Just simply take the leaves off of your celery sticks, toss them in a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, and there you have it, folks. Short rib poutine. I'm diving into this because standing here talking to you guys is doing nothing for my tummy and it's a rumbling. All seriousness, Canada, you don't know shit about poutine until you've had this. I'm calling you out. There you have it, folks. My short rib poutine. That's right. I said it. Short rib poutine. Do not make me repeat it again. We have that slow braised short rib and that red wine and beef stock. And then we took that braising liquid, reduced it down and made it into this unreal gravy. Then we topped it off with some cheese curds and it's all on top of the house made fries. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to follow us. Follow us on all social media. The link is in the description. If you don't follow, I'm gonna go to bed and I'm gonna cry at night. So please, just follow. Love you guys, we'll see you next week.